People living in Pacific Beach spotted these lights last night. So what are they and where did they come from? Today, under President Biden's order, a U.S. fighter pilot shot down an unidentified unmanned object the size of a small car. In the bustling port city of Seward, Alaska, a hub of commerce and transportation, where fishing vessels ply the waters, helicopters ferry supplies to offshore oil rigs, and military Blackhawks buzz overhead, an unusual event unfolded. More than a decade ago, a particularly strange incident shook the entire city, leaving its residents shocked up to this day. What exactly happened in Seward, Alaska? What did the locals witness? Join us as we delve into the mysterious sightings of UFOs swirling around the mystifying town. A man lost consciousness after UFO sighting. Bill Sleesman is a resident of Seward, Alaska, and has lived in the state since 1984. He works at a fish processing plant in the city as a dock manager. Typically, his job involves unloading salmon at the Resurrection Bay, and he is a pretty outdoorsy person. Now, Bill is a believer in the extraordinary. He does not think that humans are alone on the planet and cites reports of people citing Bigfoot and UFOs as justification. But perhaps what has sealed Bill's conviction is an encounter he had witnessed himself that had remained etched in his memories. Many years ago, Bill was sitting in his log cabin just before dark when he heard the sound of a military helicopter. There must have been something really strange about the sound because he decided to go out with his binoculars and investigate. What he saw confused him. Outside, he claimed to have seen a Black Hawk helicopter, which was not at all a strange sighting in Seward, as there was a military base nearby, and such helicopters were frequently flying around the city. What was strange, however, was that this helicopter had no markings whatsoever. There were no white writings, insignia, or letters that would typically identify it. It was completely black. Bill tried to figure out what the occupants of this helicopter were doing. It seemed they were just sitting there hovering. That was very strange, but it did not in any way compare to what Bill saw next as he made his way back to his cabin. As he turned away from observing the helicopter to get back into his cabin, he sighted something above him. He describes it as a huge starship, which was probably 1,500 to 2,000 feet long, around 600 feet across, and 300 to 350 feet above ground. It was big and beautiful in a gray-silver color and it was close, close enough that Bill could make details underneath. Bill thinks this starship was hovering within a quarter of a mile of his house. Bill describes that this starship had a diamond-type crystal at the middle of the bottom of it, which was emitting blue, white, and reddish light. Bill said standing underneath this gigantic starship, he could not but be in awe at its sheer size. He had been around a super tanker, and this thing made a super tanker look small. As Bill stared at this starship, completely in awe of it, something unexpected and truly strange started happening to his body. He felt a strange sensation, like a surge of energy or power. Bill was completely uncertain what this feeling was, as he had never felt something like that. It felt like his body was humming. Having witnessed this awe-inspiring thing, Bill did what anyone who has seen a hovering saucer would do. He went into his house and called his neighbors, you know, just to confirm he was not crazy. He asked his neighbors to look at the top of his house where this starship thing was and tell him if they could see what he was seeing. Amazingly, the neighbors confirmed that they were seeing what he was seeing and that he was far from making it up. These neighbors were in as much shock as Bill. Having confirmed that his imagination was not playing horrible games with him, he hung up. Bill decided to take a chair and head outside again to observe the starship for much longer. He sat in his chair in the yard and watched the flying saucer for hours. The next thing Bill knew, he was waking up inside. When one moment ago, he had been faithfully and intently watching the hovering saucer. Now, only a moment after, he was back in a chair in his log cabin, rousing from sleep. Bill cannot remember the strange hovering object leaving or how he got back into his house. He just found himself inside and that made him very confused. The strangest thing was Bill could tell that he had lost several hours that night. Being unable to account for several hours was common with alien abductions, and Bill certainly wondered if that had happened to him. One thing Bill was certain of was that whatever that hovering saucer might have been, it was definitely not of this world and he had not been the only person to have seen it. Basically, the whole town had seen it too. 
The next morning when Bill was going to work at Soldatna, Alaska, he decided to tune into a radio show called Sound Off. He was listening to this show on KSRM radio, which reaches about 40,000 people in its media trading area. As he listened, he heard many people from around Seward calling in to report seeing strange things. Particularly, they reported seeing lights. Bill has no doubts that at the time these people saw the lights, he was sitting and watching the same thing for about an hour and a half. Bill says that there were a lot of people around who had seen the occurrence, but that no one had offered any theories as to why they had seen the strange things. He had not gone out of his way to ask them about it because he did not want to appear crazy. Bill suspects that the truth is out there, but that the government is holding it secret and close to their vest. He cited the military guys in the Blackhawk, which had drawn him outside in the first place. It was clear to Bill that those military officers had been following and tracking the UFO. He says that he understands the government not wanting to tell people because many people would not believe it, but that he knew that extraterrestrial life was out there and that it existed. Bill believes that the reason Alaska has so many sightings of aliens is because it is a big state and there are so many places for these aliens to hide. If the aliens did not want anyone to see them, it was possible that no one would. He challenges anyone who thinks that what he saw, the starship, was just a figment of his imagination. He says that the UFO was real and very large. He admits that he was kind of stunned when he saw it, the starship sitting there hovering with no sound. He claimed he saw it with his own eyes and that it was the first time he had ever seen anything like that. While he had seen lights in the sky and had blown them off as satellites and airplanes, he could not do the same this time because the sight was simply unmistakable. Bill is not the only one who has seen the awe-inspiring sight. Many residents of the city turned to the radio show to share what they had seen on the fateful night. A radio talk show host hears an earful. The KSRM radio talk show host, Bob Bird, who is from Nikiski, Alaska, confirms the story. He said that with about 40,000 listeners on the show, Sound Off took calls on almost any topic to appeal to this large audience base. That night, hundreds of people saw strange lights all over Cook Inlet. Bob said that these lights would hover and then move horizontally and vertically. These lights would cast reflections on the inlet's waters and were seen by hundreds of people. At some point while on the show, Bob takes a call from Bruce, one of the city's many residents who were calling into the show to report what they had seen. Bruce said that when he had seen the lights through the trees, he had wondered what they could be. But the lights had just gone by, and that was it. Another person calls in shortly after to describe what they had seen. He also claimed to have seen lights in Tuscany around midnight or just after. This caller observed that the lights were moving in a strange pattern that he had never seen before. According to Bob, there were oil platforms in the city that may have been the source of the lights but it was highly doubtful that they came from them because the location of the lights was not even close to the oil platforms. He also mentioned that there were helicopters known to come and go that were maintaining these oil platforms, but he claimed that the individuals who had witnessed the lights were unable to determine the speed of the lights, and that meant that these had nothing to do with the helicopters. Bob believed that any single person could be mistaken, but when every single person who lived in the city was reporting the same thing, it is only reasonable to give these accounts some credibility. Despite a whole town's report of the extraterrestrial sighting, not everyone believes the tale of UFOs and hovering saucers. The skeptics debunk UFO sightings. Some doubters have asserted that it is impossible to see these alien sightings. Dissenters argue that even though the whole town of Seward reported seeing a flying saucer and strange lights with weird speeds and movement, this does not prove it was an extraterrestrial spaceship. Such skeptics contend that what Bill Sleesman and the rest of the townspeople might have seen was most likely a military aircraft technology being tested. The puzzling mystery of Bill Sleesman's loss of time and his awakening inside his home is explained as being pretty plain and simple. It was chilly outside as he sat there in his yard. It is possible that the effects of the cold were slowly causing him to lose consciousness, and he had consciousness just enough to return to his home before he perished from frostbite. Doubters believe that Bill was not moved into his house by aliens. Not too far from where he had seen the flying saucer, he noticed a military helicopter. It is possible that he witnessed a Russian plane breaching U.S. airspace, 
Reminding ourselves that Alaska is near Russia is important. Furthermore, no one claimed to have seen any extraterrestrials or aliens leave the flying saucer. Thus, the most that might have happened to it was an unidentified flying object that had nothing to do with extraterrestrial intelligent life. This makes perfect sense when you consider the story of the man-made flying saucer that was built and flew over southern China. They further question why, if extraterrestrial creatures were visiting our planet, they would wish to go somewhere extremely cold like Seward, Alaska. The majority of witnesses of reported extraterrestrial encounters characterize these beings as small, gray males who are either bare-chested or barely clad. However, it is inconceivable to imagine that sentient entities from anywhere in our universe would wish to venture onto a part of a planet that would be too chilly for their nude bodies. This particular argument is not very strong when you consider that these aliens may be cold-blooded, perhaps to degrees that are colder than the cold-blooded animals on Earth. In such a case, it is possible that their continued sighting in Alaska is because that is the most comfortable place for them. On the back of that theory, let's take a look at other sightings of aliens, UFOs, and extraterrestrial life in Alaska. UFO shot down in Alaska. Not much is known about the object that was shot down one afternoon, 10 miles off the Alaskan ice shore in February 2023. According to a source informed on the intelligence, it was also peculiar that U.S. military pilots dispatched to investigate the object provided divergent versions of what they had seen, contributing to the Pentagon's reluctance to reveal the true nature of the object. This was the second occasion in less than a week that U.S. jets had shot down an object, the first being a suspected Chinese spy balloon that went down off the coast of South Carolina. According to Pentagon spokesperson Brigadier General Patrick Ryder, the object, which officials have not classified as a balloon, was shot down at 1.45 p.m. Recovery crews had gathered the debris, which was laying above ice in U.S. territorial waters. The object was reported to have entered U.S. territorial airspace, crossed U.S. waters, and entered frozen U.S. territorial waters. John Kirby, the National Security Council's coordinator for strategic communications, later shared that the object was taken down by fighter planes from U.S. Northern Command. When the object was first noticed, some F-35 fighter jets were dispatched to investigate. Reporters were informed that the U.S. fighter aircraft made two flybys, one at night and the other early the next morning. Both, nevertheless, they only returned with a scant amount of data regarding the object. However, the pilots' later accounts of their observations were notably different. Not all pilots reported that the item interfered with their plane's sensors, although some did. Even though the object was cruising at 40,000 feet, other pilots said they could not figure out how it was remaining in the air and that they had not seen any discernible propulsion device on it. The Pentagon was unable to provide a comprehensive explanation for the object, in part because of the divergent eyewitness reports. Both the object's appearance and its origin are unknown. It was reported to be roughly the size of a small car and not comparable in size or shape to the Chinese surveillance balloon that went down off the coast of South Carolina. This object had also been moving northeast over Alaska. The object was shot down because at 40,000 feet, it constituted a reasonable threat to civilian air traffic. Ultimately, an F-22 fighter jet from Joint Base Elmendorf-Richardson, Alaska, armed with an AIM-9X missile, the same aircraft and weapon used to bring down the Chinese spy balloon, downed the object close to the Canadian border in northern Alaska. According to a U.S. official, to facilitate the pilot's ability to identify the object, the military decided to shoot it down during the day. The Alaska Air National Guard provided airborne assets to support the mission. However, it remains unclear what the object had been and why it was flying across Alaska. Once it was shot down, the object fell into the waters, and after a brief period, the United States called off search for the dropped object. This next incident happened to a pilot who was flying over the Alaskan mountains when he noticed something that shook him to his core. The UFO inside a shape-shifting cloud. Theo Chesley, a commercial pilot, has spent around 35 years flying in Alaska and has heard many tales of strange aerial encounters. However, until he had his own incredible experience flying past Mount Shishaldin, an active volcano on Unimok Island in the Aleutians, 
In 2019, Chesley had remained a skeptic, disbelieving the existence of extraterrestrial life and explaining away the occurrences others had witnessed. In the late hours of October 2019, Theo was traveling with three passengers on a typical charter aircraft from Sandpoint directly to Dutch Harbor. They were flying northward toward the volcano at this point in the flight. That day's weather was quite pleasant. Visibility was not that bad. About 15 kilometers south of the volcano, they noticed something in the sky, an object. It was a remarkably symmetrical, horizontal, disc-shaped object. The disc spread out and took on a vertical shape as they proceeded along their flight road. They were aware that something remarkable was taking place in front of them. It was a surreal experience, but they were all seeing it and there was no mistaking that it was real. It was at around that same moment that a green sphere appeared on the mountainside. The thing shoots out of the mountain in the air. They continue to see the vertically parked sphere at the same moment. This green sphere appears at a lower point on the mountainside. It was somewhat unexpected what happened to the vertical sphere in the sky next. The vertical sphere got out of shape when something flew inside of it. There were perhaps two small wings out there that had been formed from the vertical sphere. Theo decided they were done there and there. It was apparent to him that he had seen enough. Not long later, they fled the scene. Theo acknowledged that at that time, his degree of concern was through the roof. However, that was only the first encounter. Theo experienced another incident months after. He finds himself alone in a separate aircraft six months later. Suddenly, he saw a massive cloud formation appearing just above the volcano through his left window. This cloud structure seemed to emerge out of nowhere. The peak was to the east and above this cloud. In his whole life, Theo claimed, he had never witnessed anything like it. He noticed that there was nothing in the clear, empty sky until the cloud materialized out of thin air. Theo said that this cloud changed shape multiple times and that at one point there appeared to be something black inside it, an object beneath this thing. Theo had the plane on autopilot at the time of the incident and the plane was passing past in a straight line. He returned by way of the mountain on his flight path. He had got the plane on autopilot once more as he returned. Glancing down, he sees that he is 35 degrees off track toward the direction of the mountain. After turning off the autopilot, adjusting the heading, and getting the aircraft back in the air, he believes he is safe. However, he glances around once more, searching to see if there is anything, perhaps a strange cloud formation, and then he looks down. It is then that he realizes something is off. Returning his attention to his aircraft, he notices that it is back on track for the mountain. It was strange to Theo that this had happened twice. Subsequently, he decides to fly the aircraft by hand. That seemed to work, but Theo says that such a thing had never happened to him before when he was on autopilot. It was evident that an object somewhere in the mountains was pulling his aircraft towards it. Somehow, the autopilot was picking up on an odd magnetic signal. Theo adds that aircraft, including military aircraft, have been disappearing for the past 70 years, yet all of this seems to fit well into the mystery surrounding Alaska. Bill's story is not the only alien sighting that has happened in the port city of Seward, Alaska. This next tale is similar to Bill's in the strangest way possible. A scary light at night. In Seward, Alaska, a man named Jeff Erickson witnessed something so astounding that he could not forget it even if he wanted to. Jeff is the owner of a lodge called Granite Point Mountain Lodge. He has lived in Alaska for 26 years and spent most of those years living a subsistence lifestyle and has therefore formed a bond with the wilderness. He calls Alaska a ruggedly lovely area with constant wet weather. According to Jeff, there are many activities to do in Seward. Hiking around the mountains allows you to spot lynx, black bears, grizzly bears, and other amazing animals. Jeff shares a home with Melissa Salgado, his partner, and their three young children. The family goes hunting, fishing, and camping in the woods frequently. Jeff believes that there are unidentified flying objects, UFOs, roaming the city of Seward. One night, he sees something that he believes nothing else comes close to. While in his cabin in the woods, sorting out the logistics of getting a foundation put in for a new cabin, he decided to take a rest and went to bed. But when he looked up at the window, he saw something that stunned him. The terrifying lights outside drew him from his bed to the window. He began to record the scene with his phone. These lights were moving so quickly with an easy fluidity 
that Jeff could immediately tell that this was not the aircraft that usually made its way over Seward. The speed and cornering of these aircraft defied the possibility of human-made aircraft. On that fateful night, across the bay from their lodge, Jeff's partner, Melissa, played tour guide for her friend who had recently moved to Seward and was not used to extraterrestrial activities. Melissa remarked that while she is a skeptic by nature, seeing was simply believing. It was hard not to believe when others around her also saw it with her and from different perspectives. It was around 10.30 p.m. when Melissa was driving down Nash Road with her friend, T. Charles. T. hadn't been in town for too long and so had not seen much of Seward. T. explained that he had moved to Seward from New Orleans, Louisiana to work in the fishing industry. That night, Melissa had been showing him around the city, riding around when they saw something floating up in the sky. Being very noticeable, they pulled over on the side of the road. There were flashing lights twinkling high up in the sky. At this point, T was asking Melissa about the menacing lights. This was happening at the same time as Jeff was witnessing the same lights. T describes the object up above as a spaceship or machine thing or saucer in the sky. Understandably, he did not have the words to describe this particular phenomenon. They were both puzzled by it, and T admits that he was scared out of his wits. In the next story, a woman begins to suspect that aliens are after her when she has several encounters with them. One of those encounters leads to something really fascinating. The aliens want me. The second largest city in the country by area, Juneau is also the expansive capital of Alaska and is tucked between a rough mountain range and the Pacific Ocean. Because of its stunning environment and mild climate, it is not always evident that this wonderful city is also home to some of the most incredible things. Kolai Stockton is a resident of Juneau. She says that Juneau is great because there are a lot of outdoor activities one can do. It is possible to hike, bike, kayak, and camp. It has beaches, rivers, lakes, and of course, the Pacific Ocean. Due to its size, there is a lot more that one can do in the city. Coley thinks that humans are not alone that extraterrestrials exist. Similar to the Bermuda Triangle, these extraterrestrial life forms were drawn to the Alaskan Triangle. The term Alaskan Triangle describes a 32,000 square mile area of terrain that reaches from the bottom of the state to the top, where every year over 16,000 people go missing and UFOs are observed. Kolai recalls her first encounter with aliens that melted all the skepticism she had had. She was on a camping trip with friends along the Gastono Channel a few miles from home in downtown Juneau. It was a night in the summer of 2016 when one of the campers ran to the camping party and asked if they had seen it. Kolai asked what and saw the person pointing. When she looked at what was being pointed to, she saw a bright orange ball of light flashing and lighting up everything around her. Suddenly, a massive vessel hovered over them. It had two blue lights shining on it diagonally from one another. Kole and her companions could barely have been separated from the ship by more than a two-story distance. Despite its size, the massive vessel was soundless. Kolai was terrified and utterly dumbfounded. In fact, she was too startled to speak. Kolai and her companions were clueless about what to do because they did not understand what they were witnessing. A year later in the summer of 2017, Kolai witnessed another extraterrestrial sighting. Kolai was anchored at night in a bay this time. All of a sudden, a bright light that resembled a campfire appeared in the window. However, these lights started to move quickly. Then it was hidden by a mountain. Kolei found the experience frightening, much like the first time, because they had been in an isolated area when the lights arrived. Kolei managed to capture a few pictures and videos of the interaction. She could see lights, two of them in the sky, and between the trees, there were two more. While Coley takes comfort in knowing that she is not alone in the knowledge of these alien occurrences, she is still troubled by the fact that the aliens keep revealing themselves to her. She knows that they exist and they are not going anywhere anytime soon. If you enjoyed this video about alien occurrences in Alaska, like and subscribe to this channel to get more videos like this. Thanks for watching.